says Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Khomeini, who has uh, once again reacted to the ongoing developments. He says the demise of uh, Hassan Nasrallah has deeply saddened him. He further states wars, conflicts will all come to an end if the United States of several you know, European countries leave West Asia to itself. So that's the uh, comment coming in from Iran's supreme leader. Now, Ayatollah Khomeini, uh, Siddhant uh, plays a very important role in the ongoing conflict in the manner in which we've seen this escalation on part of Iran because reports have cited that it is him who instructed Iran to go ahead with, you know, these ballistic missiles. That's the instruction that, you know, the forces were acting on and goes without saying given that, you know, major decisions are taken by the supreme leader in the country. Given that he's also mourning the death of Nasrallah makes amply clear that, you know, Iran is uh, decisive in the manner in which it, it wants to take on not just Israel, but anyone who is standing with Israel in this fight. Well, Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei has his own audience, his own followers worldwide. And since, uh, uh, you know, uh, before him, uh, his predecessor, Ayatollah Khamenei, when he took over uh, the powers in Iran, he fought with the American forces. So this conflict between the current regime of Iran and America goes back to 1979 or maybe even before that. Now, Hezbollah is, uh, uh, is uh, through Hezbollah, Houthi and Hamas, Iran projects its powers in Middle East. Uh, Iran never directly engages with Israel uh, militarily. Very rare they directly engage with each other. Yesterday that happened. Uh, something unprecedented happened where Iran directly launched missiles uh, to Israel. Now, it's also about the reputation of Ali Khamenei uh, and perhaps Iran, because uh, the morale of Iranian proxies are all-time low. Uh, their senior leadership has been eliminated by Israel. The way Ismail Haniyeh was killed in Tehran, the pager blast, the air strikes in Lebanon, and also the Hezbollah leadership being eliminated. So it was a blow to the reputation of Ali Khamenei. Uh, no matter who is the president of Iran, the current president is seen as a progressive person. But, uh, you know, the ultimate decision making is with the Ali Khamenei. And, and, and that perhaps, uh, you know, creates a lot of pro problem for Iran geopolitically uh, also. Because even if the government is of a different view, Ali Khamenei's view would be uh, accepted. And you see, since yesterday, after the strike, uh, after the uh, launch of uh, missiles on Israel, there have been series of tweets, uh, social media posts coming from Ali Khamenei's uh, handle. Perhaps to send out a message to set a precedent that we can take revenge and we are taking revenge for the lives lost and the devastation caused by Israel and Zionist regime, they call uh, Israel Zionist regime. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's about his personal reputation, his personal, uh, you know, uh, uh, fan following, his own audience, domestic audience, is what uh, Iran is doing. And, and trust me, many experts say this, what Iran did it was nothing but a mistake, miscalculation, and Iran should have. Uh, avoided, you know, what's uh, interesting is what you just pointed out, Siddharth, and I, I want you to elaborate a little bit on that. The act of self-defense, as Iran is uh, calling this to be, where is, you know, this particular narrative coming in from? If we speak of the Iranian position, because remember, in April itself, when we saw, you know, uh, what was happening between Israeli forces and uh, the Hamas in Gaza, we did see a little bit of intervention coming from Iran back then as well. Let's not forget the kind of uh, barrages that were launched at Israel by Iran in April this year itself. So how is it that they're calling this a retaliation, an act of self-defense? Well, Iran has to say that it all started with the killing of Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran uh, when he was a guest uh, for the government of uh, Iran uh, at the time of the swearing-in of the new president. Iran also has to say that then later the pager blast took place in Lebanon. What uh, Israel uh, is doing in Gaza by invading Gaza and the killing the Syrian leadership. Then the air strikes in Lebanon, which had killed more than 500 people. Now the ground invasion. So, you know, Iran has to say that they have defended uh, their territory. And, uh, and, and it, is, it is not an attack, it's a retaliation, which uh, Iran has done. So... You know, that is how Iran is projecting what uh, Iran has done. And Iran also has to say that they, their target was Mossad headquarters and the military establishment uh, of uh, Israel. Uh, they never wanted to harm any civilian. That is what Iran has also said. 
But you know, uh, the problem here is that uh, that you know, uh, Israel has issues with Iran supporting the proxy. Uh, mm. That with with the technology, with the ideological support, with the recruitment rights. So Iran is uh, not directly but indirectly involved, and there's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, U.S. State Department have come up with many, many reports of funds, etc., being given by Iran to to the proxy. So it's all out in the public. Interestingly, mm-hmm. Hassan Nasrallah, the chief of uh, uh, of uh, of uh, uh, Hezbollah, who was eliminated, was married to the daughter of Qasem Soleimani, who was okay. the chief of IRGC and was shot down by U.S. forces in 2020. So that level of proximity and closeness uh, they have at the leadership level also. So, so, you know, there is no difference between Iran and Hezbollah. And that is exactly what Israel says, that Iran, uh, Iran never, uh, never uses Hezbollah mm-hmm. to attack Israel. So the ultimate enemy is Iran. Mm-hmm.